Long ago, the four nations lived in peace. The charisma, uniqueness, nerve, and talent nations. But then, the nerve nation attacked. And hello, spooky friends. It's your host here, Paul, with my co-host, DJ, per usual. And we're here today, as usual, with another story I'm super excited to share with you guys. Now, but first, before we get into the story or any of our usual jazz, I gotta know, DJ, because it's been a while since I've seen you. How was your week? What did you do? What's going down? Well, the highlight of my week was I took a long weekend and I went up to Chicago to visit our friends Mike and Riley celebrate St. Patrick's Day. You know I'm very Irish. I get down with the potatoes. <laughs> right, right. Um, but surprisingly, I didn't eat that many potatoes while I was up there. Nor did I drink beer or Irish whiskey. Wait, don't they like turn the river green in Chicago? Yes. Um, so... Riley and I, because Mike had to work that day, talked about going down and watching them turn the river green because, mm-hmm. like, it's a big thing where people line the rivers and they watch as they dye the river. But he woke me up at like nine thirty because I didn't set an alarm because I'm on vacation. Mm-hmm. And he's like, "Did you want to go down?" And I was like, "What time do they turn the river green?" And he was like, ten a.m." And I was like, "And we have a workout class at eleven here because they have like an orange theory." Mm -hmm. on the first floor of their building, which is where we have a... Have you heard of Orange Theory? Yeah, yeah, I know what it is. Um, So they have like an Orange Theory studio right in the first floor of their building. Mm -hmm. And we had a 11 o'clock class there. And I was like, there's no point in us rushing downtown, because they live in Boys Town in Chicago, for anyone who knows Chicago. Mm -hmm. Rushing downtown, finding parking, going to the river to... By that point, we'd already miss them turning the river green. Like, we'd see the after effects. Right. And then we'd have to rush back. So I was like, let's just have coffee and breakfast, and then we'll just, like, leisurely go downstairs for this Orange Theory class. Um, But on Monday, we also thought, like, you know what? There's so many tourists. Not only from people, like, outside of Chicago, like outside of Chicago, Chicago, Mm -hmm. but like people from the suburbs who come in to celebrate. Mm -hmm. Because Chicago has the second largest St. Patrick's Day celebrations outside of Boston. I didn't know that. That's crazy. Yeah, it's it's Boston, Chicago, New York. Mm -hmm. Because there are a ton of Irish people in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So we avoided downtown, but I did get to see the Green River on Monday because Riley and I went to the... Art Institute of Chicago. Okay, okay. That's so cool. Did you meet, like, any hot guys? Do the gays, like, show up for the St. Patrick's Day um, So the great thing about Mike and Riley, when I go to visit them, they live in Boys Town. Mm-hmm. Which, that's, like, the name that's been called. It's, like, the first formally recognized gay village in the United States. Oh, really? That's yes. crazy. It's all, like, the main drag along North Halstead Street is all, like, gay bars, and, like, there's, like, gay fetish shops, and, like, pride flags everywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, So, like, they live in the gay neighborhood. Right. Which is fabulous. Um, But I wasn't, I was sleeping on their couch, so I wasn't really there to, like, meet men. Mm Mm-hmm. Although, on Sunday night, we did go to a bar, and the bartender was very cute, and I thought about leaving him my number when I paid the check. Mm -hmm. Like, I definitely paid the check just so that I could leave my number, and then I chickened out. Just because, like, when I worked in service, I hated when men hit on me. Really? I would love that. I would love that. No, so when I was working at Macy's, I would literally wear a wedding ring Mm -hmm. so that people would not flirt with me. See, I like attention. I'm an attention whore. I'm a Leo. I'm, I love the attention. Here's the thing. There were some times when it was like nice flirting. Mm-hmm. And then there were times where it was like sexual harassment. Oh, see, that's spooky. I don't mess with that. But like, if it's a cute guy flirting with me, I'm there. Like, I'm so lonely. Well, Paul, how was your week since I haven't seen you? So my week was a lot more boring <laughs> than yours. I've just been fighting the cold, really. Like, 
It's officially spring. We're recording this mm-hmm. at the end of March. Yes. But it still feels like winter. Like, it's in the 30s. But I need it to be in the 70s. Yes. I am over this cold. I want to, like, walk outside with a, without a jacket on. Like, I'm tired on waiting on trains in the cold. Like, I'm just tired of the yes. cold. And spring's my favorite time of the year because... The flowers bloom mm-hmm. and like there's nothing like walking out of the sky. Sorry, walking outside on the first warm day of the year. Like it's such a nice feeling. Oh my gosh, yes. Oh, but we've already had that. We had that like back in January. We had a day, a couple days that were in like the high 60s, 70s. That's true. That's true. But things Global were still warming, bitches. Right. It's fucking up the seasons. Right, right. But speaking of a uh, global warming. Why don't I tell us a little bit about April's Hot Guy of the Month? Oh. Oh. I don't know if you guys are ready for this Hot Guy of the Month. I don't know, are we? Probably not, because it's Mr. Saltburn himself. Mr. Barry Keoghan. Oh, I want him to fuck my grave. (laughs) Oh my gosh. On God's internet? On God's podcast? If he stayed with me, he wouldn't have to lick the drain. I have something else he could lick. Oh my God, DJ. I'm calling the cops. (laughs) Stop. (laughs) Saltburn was so good. It was disgusting, but sensual. Yes, yes. Yeah, very much all of that. But this month, we won't only just discuss Barry Keoghan's role in Saltburn, because he was actually in a ton of movies. He's done a lot of stuff, and he's actually, he came from nothing, and he worked himself up. Wasn't he in the the Banshee of Inishkirin? I think he was, actually, yeah, yeah. And I only know that piece my father, like, for three months straight about to me was that movie. Right. And I was like, why are we discussing this? Right, right. Well, I just want to say that for now, all I'm going to say mm-hmm. is that Barry Keoghan is not just a pretty face. He's also a, he's a very complex man and a complex actor, and he has such an interesting journey, and I'm mm-hmm. so excited to share more about him with you guys this month. And check out TikTok, because I'll post some more stuff on TikTok. Yes. I hope you guys enjoyed our Terra Yummy content last month. That was so much fun to make, and I hope you guys really enjoyed that last month. DJ and I really enjoyed making it, especially with the matching outfits. That was so much fun. Oh my gosh. We're keeping the matching outfits and we're just... Can we wear those when we go on tour? Oh, for sure. (laughs) One day we'll do a Terry Yummy night. Like, not even mention, just come out in these cute little pink crop top hoodies and oversized sweatpants. Like, that be our tour costume? Yes, let's do it. Let's get into it. That Well, for one night, because I have a lot of outfit ideas for other nights. But... Here's a really bad transition, you guys. Were you going to tell me the fact about Barry Keoghan, or were you just introducing him? I was just introducing oh, him. Oh, okay. <laughs> bad tra- sorry, back to the bad transition. Back to a bad transition. I'm really excited to share with you guys the rest of the month, everything I have to bring about Barry Keoghan. He's so cool. He's so interesting, and I'm excited to share. And moving forward to the alcohol portion of this section. Yes! So today... We have the Prophecy wine. It's from, it's a Pinot Noir, Mm -hmm. and it's from California, and it's aged from 2020, bottled in 2020, aged a good three or four years now, I forget what year. What a bad year. I know, right? So hopefully this wine isn't as bad as that year was. Now, the front is really cool looking. I noticed right from the get-go when I picked out this wine that it looks like the full tarot card. does or like a jester or court jester it has a really nice pretty uh label on the front but let me read the back to you because there's nothing like getting to the back so at prophecy wines our inspiration comes from the beauty of the harvest and the possibility of greatness in a glass wines are drawn from our premier global vineyard vine sites not vines sites (laughs) Individually selected to bear each of the varietals defining characteristic, Prophecy Pinot Noir showcases the best of California. The wine is elegant and medium bodied with luscious layers of red cherry and raspberry, complemented by complex spice notes, 
leading to a velvety, smooth finish. And there's nothing like a velvety, smooth finish. So, what? Other than a cream-filled finish. Very bad. Ooh, I want a Krispy Kreme so bad. I <laughs> nearly stopped at Dunkin' Donuts on my way over here this morning. I wouldn't have blamed you. To honestly. get a coffee, and I was like, oh. And I could get two donuts, one for me and for one for Paul, but the drive through line was just too long. Mm. What can you do? Maybe we'll get them next time, Tiger. We'll get them next time. Did you just call me Tiger? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was just so... so <laughs> that was so off the cuff. <laughs> Anytime. Well, I do have to apologize. This one was a crack, and I accidentally cracked it open too soon. I'm so sorry, everyone. I'm a failure. Well, we'll give them a little ASMR or something else. Oh, you can do it! Yes! <laughs> there's a lot of sounds I can make with my mouth. <laughs> well, at right. least there's one talented thing you can do with your mouth. Bitch! <laughs> it's on site. Once we're done recording this podcast, it's outside. We're we'll fighting. we at the gate at 3 o'clock. Period. I'm ready. Okay. ASMR pour. Pour number two. She smells nice. All right. That's delightful. That is very nice. It has a little kick to it. I like mm-hmm. that. I like a little kick. See, Pinot Noir has always scared me because, like, Noir is French for black, and I always think it's good because, like, it's going to be dark. It's going to be dry. Mm-hmm. But that's really nice. That yeah. might... It's smooth. But and I like the kick at the end, too. It might be up there with my favorite Cabernet Sauvignon. Ooh. I would definitely buy this again. Prophecy? Prophecy's really good. Um, You've tried other of their wines? Yes. My brother, when he turned 21, mm-hmm. he liked Moscato, and I got him a Prophecy Moscato. And we went to a family dinner that was BYOB, and he brought that, and I tried some of it. I think it was a Sauvignon Blanc. Mm-hmm. And it was, all of their wines are super clean and fresh tasting. I agree. Which this is. Based on this one. How many grapes would you give it? How many grapes? Oh, that's a good question. I'd give it four. Four grapes. I'm going to give it four and a half. Four and a half? Okay, okay. You like it a little more than I do. I would definitely drink it again. I would bring it to a dinner party. I don't party. know. Actually, no. No, I'm going to say five grapes for me. I'm five really enjoying grapes? this. Okay, period. Okay. So, you know when DJ gives us five grapes, that means you'll, y'all have to go out and buy it. And remember, we're not sponsored. So. Yet. Yet. We're not sponsored yet. So these At are our honest wines. opinions. Honest opinions. Honestly, though, if we were to be sponsored by a wine brand, I'd want to be sponsored by Apothecary Wines. Yes, but also, so a lot of podcasts are sponsored by HelloFresh. Yeah. Which I want. But when I worked at Macy's, they had HelloFresh workers in there, like, trying to sell it. Mm -hmm. And they got me because they have a wine box. Oh, do they? Where they they send you eight bottles of wine, and that's the HelloFresh sponsor I want. That's iconic. I didn't know HelloFresh did wines. Yes. And you know what? I bet if you go to HelloFresh.com slash Crips... No, I'm kidding. We're not sponsored. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> um, everyone start adding Crips and Cor... Or adding right. HelloFresh saying, you gotta get... You gotta hook our boys up on... Crips and Corks. Right, right. Get us that sponsorship, yo. But until then, DJ, why don't I tell you a story? I'm ready. Awesome. The word witch strikes fear into the hearts of many. When we picture a witch, we picture an old, decrepit lady with gray hair, pointy hat, and sometimes even green skin. But what if this depiction was all wrong? What if a witch wasn't a scary old lady in the woods trying to eat children? What if a witch looked just like you and I? What if they didn't cast spells, well, evil spells, or even fly on broomsticks? 
But more amazingly, what if I told you witches were real and not just shady characters in books, movies, and TV shows? Today, we're going to dispel all of this hocus pocus and discuss Lori Cabot, the official witch of Salem. Iconic. I mm. am so excited because I've met some of the Pittsburgh witches. Mm-hmm. And like Salem is like witch central for it the United States. Is. So like I'm so excited to hear about like the official witch of Salem. Now have you ever heard of Larry Cabot before this? No. Okay, okay. So I'm so excited to like teach you about because like Lori Cabot has a special place in my heart from my childhood. I started like researching like witchcraft and things from a young age. Mm-hmm. So she's one of the first people I came across when I started researching like supernatural and witchy stuff from a young age. So Lori definitely has a special place in my heart. So I'm so excited to tell you more about her. But first, like all good stories, we should start from the beginning. Lori Cabot was born Mercedes Elizabeth Kiersey, her real name. Mm-hmm. Now, Lori Cabot is her witch name. Okay. Now, for those at home who don't know, sometimes, like, witches, when they get deep into the craft and dedicate their life to the craft, they change their name. It's kind of like a drag name, mm-hmm. but for witches. Is it like... Um... Just because it's a little more spiritual, is it kind of like a baptismal or confirmation name? That's true, too. Yeah, don't... Yeah, Christians do that. Yeah, in the Roman Catholic Church, you take a confirmation name. Right, right. It's very much like that. I have beef with confirmation names, though. Why? Because when I was going for my confirmation as a Catholic... I was told, like, you should, like, pick a saint who's your favorite or who you identify with. And so I said, okay, I want my confirmation name to be Joan of Arc. <laughs> no, you didn't. Yes. Bitch, that's, that's my brave. favorite saint. And my dad was like, you can't do that. That's a girl saint. And I was like, oh no, God. I'm not saying my saint name is Joan. I'm saying my saint name is Joan of Arc. The full thing, like, so that Mm -hmm. it's very obvious. He's like, you can't do that. And, like, I'm very, like, Russo-Polish. So I was like, fine. I want to do Alexei, which is a Russian name. And he's like, you can't do a Russian saint because that's a Russian Orthodox saint, not a Catholic saint. I was like, fine, I'll do Nicholas because I was born the day after Christmas. Oh, my God. All these rules and gender stereotypes... Sorry. Jeez. <laughs> Not me burping on the pod. It's fine. But... So I know like in the Catholic Church you can't be baptized, but once I want to see if you can be confirmed a second time so that I can finally take Joan of Arc as my confirmation yes. name. Yes, take it back. Take back that name, DJ. I'm here for it. I'm here Anyways, for it. Anyways, Lori. Yes, Lori. She was born in 1949, and she was grew up in California And then, like, moved east to New England for her early years slash teenage years. And by New England, I mean the Boston area, the Mm -hmm. Massachusetts area. Okay. Right. So, from a young age, her parents noticed she had, like, physical... Sorry, not physical. She had psychic ability. She had, like, special powers. She was different from other kids from a young age. There's one particular story from when Lori was 12 years old old right Mm -hmm. she was playing in the grass and her mom was watching her and lori recalls this moment and says like she remembers just thinking like you know what i want to lift off the ground i want to float and you know what she much to her mom's amaze and surprise that she lifted off the ground no fucking way right no fucking way she you know what levitate like i mean there's i want a million dollars i want a million dollars yeah, and how are you going to do that? For- I don't know. If she could think, I want to fly off the ground, I'm just going to think I want a million dollars till it shows up in my bank account. That's tea, that's tea. I mean, there are no witnesses to this, but... But her mom, like, did her mother corrupt? corroborate this i did not hear her mom corroborate this i heard Lori say this and tell this story i do believe Lori though because i do i do trust Lori. now imagine like you're in this yard and you see your child just start to flow Mm -hmm. like wouldn't that be crazy like think about it back in the day too like very like 
traditional values, Christianity is in full swing in the United States. Anything that's not like worldly and Jesus is of the devil. Yes. So all of a sudden you see your daughter also, doing something scary. Okay, so she was born in 49, she's 12. This is like in the 60s? Like mm-hmm. the Cold War? Oh, I guess it would be like 60s. So 49 plus 12 is like 61. Two, yeah, so that's 61. Okay, never mind. I was going to be like, oh, like my daughter's a Russian spy, but that joke doesn't work. Right, right. No, no. So like think about this. Not only is your daughter floating, there's like a supernatural aspect mm-hmm. to it. And then you got to worry about like, oh, what's going on here? Is this the devil? Is my daughter possessed? Like... Is she, like, is something supernatural mm-hmm. going on that might be up the devil? Because at that time, like, even nowadays, like, anything that isn't, like, upright Christian spiritual, like, is of the devil. Yes. So you can imagine, like, after this and seeing all of Lori's other psychic abilities and supernatural yeah, because abilities. Because this was right after the last major spell of spiritualism, I think. Right, exactly. Which is when everything got really conservative again. Right, exactly. Okay. So, like, you can imagine her parents had a tough time coming to mm-hmm. terms with Lori's abilities. Yeah. Like, it doesn't fit in with that whole uh, mom, dad, two and a half kids, white picket fence, two cars in the garage. Right. American dream that you think of in the 50s and the 60s. Right, right. And they would try and find ways to rationalize it. Rationalize it. Like, Lori's father would always say, like, it has to be, there has to be some sort of scientific explanation why she can do these things. It has to be some sort of science. And that'll come into play in the future because I think this, her father's mind towards science and wanting a scientific explanation for everything, I think that rubbed off a little bit on Lori. And See, I'm of the opinion, because I'm of the opinion that magic is intention plus action is magic. Mm-hmm. So how is science any different? Exactly, exactly. I mean, what is science but potion making? Exactly, you're making potions to make things work. I mean, exactly because most of the chemicals that you use in chemistry mm-hmm. come from the natural world. Exactly. So is that different from mixing herbs together? Exactly. My two cents. Exactly. I'm glad you said that. So. Moving on forward, so her parents eventually, like, came around, started mm-hmm. to adjust it, and Lori's mom would actually take her to the local library and try and find books that would help explain, like, some of the things that Lori could do, right? Because back in the day, you don't have Google, you don't have the internet, you don't have, like, Lori's that 13 stuff. years old reading Albert Einstein's chemistry in the textbooks. <laughs> <laughs> trying to explain why well, it is she's doing this stuff. They were looking for more, um mystical books that would help explain it. Oh, so her mom was like an ally. Exactly. She started to accept it more and more. And there was a very interesting person at this library that would help them. There was a library named Felicity. And she would help... She would direct them to books and suggest books. Have you ever seen the show The Good Witch? Yes! I love that show! Yes, it's about this... In the movie? Ah! Yeah, it's about the show, The Good Witch, who yes. would just, like, do good the things Greenland. for the townspeople, Ca- and she had a... Cassidy. M- Her name was Cassidy, wasn't it? Yeah, Cassidy Nightingale, right? Yes. It's such a wholesome In TV Grey show. House. Oh, I love that. It, honestly, it's an iconic See, TV show. the only thing that would make it better was if they had a gay character, but Hallmark will never do that. Yeah. What can you do? But the moral is, Felicity had very the Good Witch vibes. She would help them out, point them in the right direction, and she had kind of a magical, like, little thing about her. And then there was one day, Mm -hmm. Lori and her mom went to the library, and Felicity pulled Lori's mom aside and came out as a witch to Lori's mom. Now, back, you have to remember again, like we said earlier, back in the day, like, they're conservative and everything. Yeah. She came out as a witch to her mom, which wasn't coming back. Back in the day, that was a coming out. Yeah, and I know in Salem, like, they were super, super not into... Well, this wasn't in Salem. This was in Boston. Uh, okay, never They're mind. not. We're not at Salem okay. yet. Now, Felicity actually asked Lori's mom if she could take Lori under her wing and teach her everything she knows about the craft and everything. Aww. And Lori's mom actually said yes and allowed her to, like, take Lori under her wing. So in Lori's teenage years... She actually was being taught about witchcraft and things. 
Now, one thing Lori did say in her interviews was that Felicity had a very traditional approach to witchcraft mm-hmm. and the craft. Like, and Lori wasn't really too into that. She was more into the sciency part of it all. Like, mm-hmm. what explains it all? What makes it all happen? Okay. Things like that, right? And I think now this is a good time to side note that witchcraft can be considered a religion, right? I'm sure, I don't know if the folks at home have heard of Wicca, Wiccanism. Now, I know Lori herself, she doesn't like the term Wicca because she thinks it is a cop-out into saying the term witch. Mm -hmm. But this is a whole religion. So, like, when I say tradition and stuff, it is, like, a religion. And I'll go more into the religious aspect of things yeah, later it's a in the spiritual podcast. practice. Exactly. I'm down for the, it is um, a yeah. spiritual path. So when I say traditional stuff, this is like, imagine like you're a Christian and you're learning all the Christian traditions. Mm-hmm. This is like that, but the witch version of that, right? Okay, I'm glad you said that because... So I like studied a little bit of witchcraft. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing. In witchcraft, you have candle magic, where you state an intention and you light a candle. Yeah, yeah, exactly. In Christianity, you say a prayer and you light a candle. Mm-hmm. How is it any different? It is very much the same thing. And if you look at, like, traditions like Christmas and things, a lot of the traditional practices... Oh, yeah. Christianity come... totally stole pagan Religion. rites. And if you know about your history, you know they did that to integrate... So the pagans would feel more comfortable integrating into Christianity, mm-hmm. like because that's what happened. Like pagans got forcefully like yes. And one of the things that blew my mind was when I was learning about like mythology and folklore, in like literature classes, mm-hmm. was how they um, the Christian church. It was that the early Christian church might have taken the story of Orpheus. Mm-hmm saving Eurydice or Hercules Hercules it was Hercules um going to the underworld Mm -hmm. to defeat Cerberus Mm -hmm. and how they kind of took that to create Jesus Christ oh really because it was like because the early church was very split on whether Jesus was the Messiah whether he was the Christ or whether he was just another prophet Mm mm-hmm and how to get the Greeks on their side, they sort of said like, oh yes, a son of God went into the underworld and then he came back. Which that was very prevalent in Greek mythology, these demigods going into the underworld to create complete task and coming back for the betterment of the world. Exactly. Yeah. And it's not surprising, like, traditions like that got passed on or, mm-hmm. like, changed and things like that. I think there's a little speck of truth in all religions. I completely agree with that. But we'll get, we can get more into that later. Back to Lori. So Lori spent a lot of her teenage years with Felicity, right? And so then Lori kind of, like, into her early 20s stayed on this path of being different. Mm-hmm. So instead of going to college, she actually worked as a showgirl and a costume designer for a burlesque Ooh. show. Yeah, she was a diva. She was a I diva back that. in the day, right? She was having a good time. She was living her best life, partying and stuff. But for a while there, she did take a step back from the crazy life. Mm-hmm. She took a step back from the witchcraft, even. And she got married twice. From each marriage, she had two daughters. No, she had one daughter from each marriage. So she had two daughters in total, one daughter from each marriage. So after her life, sorry, after her second divorce, Mm -hmm. she kind of had this moment where she was like, what am I going to do with my life? This marriage thing isn't working out. Like, what is going to, what am I really going to do? Like, and if you think about it back in the day, too, like, divorce wasn't as acceptable. Yeah. Like, she has these two daughters. Well, I mean, she's a single mom. Okay, she's born in 49, so she would have turned 20 in 69. I guess it's, like, that time when divorce beca- started to become normal. Oh, really? Hmm. But women working wasn't necessarily normal yet. That's true. That's true. Now, this was a very defining moment in Lori's life. Lori sat herself down, and she asked herself... What am I going to do with my life? Who am I and what am I going to do? And then the word witch popped into her mind. And she knew what she was going to do with the rest of her life. She was a witch. 
She was going to live as a witch, and that was going to be who she was, what she did, and how she lived and made her money. Now, you you know, it's to know something interesting. At mm -hmm. first, Lori didn't even want to move to Salem, Massachusetts. Okay. And an interesting fact, too. At this point in time, Salem, Massachusetts wasn't really the witch haven that it is today, yes. right? Yes, yes. I was mentioning that earlier, yes. Yeah, like... Actually, the elected officials and everything, the tourism department and mm -hmm. everything, they were trying to, like, keep the witch trials down, the burnings, all that down, because, like, they thought it, like, tattered the reputation of Salem and everything. So, like, nothing about Salem really drew Lori mm -hmm. in. It wasn't the witch haven it was at the time and things. But what really convinced her was her best friend, who also was divorced and had kids. Mm -hmm. She sat Lori down and was like, hey, there's this really amazing house in Salem, and it's very nice. It's very big. We can raise our kids. Let's just do it and go for it. Oh, so they like moved in together and raised their kids together? Exactly. Exactly. I love that. Yeah. So it was actually Lori's friend that made her move to Salem, Massachusetts mm -hmm. and convinced her to do so. And little did they know, like that move would change history. Oh, I love that because, like, there's sometimes when I think like Yumi and our friend Dan should like just buy a big like six bedroom house, right? And just live with your friends and vibe and be yeah, in, like, a little and community just, and like six bedrooms. So we each have a bedroom and we each have like a private space, right. and then we have like common areas. Oh. Okay. I kind of lived in a space like that when I lived in that spiritual community in Colorado. That's mm -hmm. a sp story for another time. Too long of a story for right now. But I did live in LDR. a spiritual, intentional community in Colorado for a while. And it was very kind of like that. But, you know, things were pretty quiet for Lori at first mm -hmm. in Salem. Until one day. Now, a little backstory. Lori actually lived right across the street from the mayor of Salem, right? Oh, and at this point, she wasn't too out about being a witch mm -hmm. or anything. She was just vibing. And Lori's daughter and the mayor's daughter would play together, right? So the mayor already, like, kind of knew who mm -hmm. Lori was and everything. So that's just a little backstory. The mayor's already kind of aware of Lori. Now, one day, Lori's cat, which this cat, Lori, considered her familiar. Right. For those who don't know... A familiar is a witch's companion, and they're believed to also protect the witch and aid in their spiritual works. Mm -hmm. So Lori, not only, it wasn't just her pet, she was very tied to this cat, right? Right. So Lori's cat, or familiar, got stuck in a tree. So obviously, Lori's freaking out. Right. So she calls the police department. She's like, my cat's stuck in a tree. I need y'all to come down in this bitch right now, okay? So the policemen are like, no, we don't do that anymore. Like, good luck, lady. What do you mean they don't do that? Exactly. And then she called the fire department, too. And the fire department told her the same thing. <laughs> huh? Right? Right? So Lori is up in arms. She's flustered. She's frustrated. What does Lori do? She calls the local news station. She calls the local news station and says, My name is Lori Cavett. I'm a witch. My familiar is stuck in a tree, and I need that cat out of that tree right now. Wait, 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 wait. The escalation of the police won't help her, the fire department doesn't help her. I'm going to out myself as a witch right. to the newspaper. Right. That's something I would do. Now, the news person on the line, they were shocked at first. They were quiet, and they were like, I'm going to have to call you back. <laughs> so they hang up and they talk with like the other news people because the story of the century just dropped in their lap. They have this witch. She's openly a witch. In she, Salem. In Salem. Yeah. Like the news story just dropped into their lap and trust and believe they showed up there. And when that hit the news, it not only hit the news in Salem, it hit international news. It okay. was everywhere. Okay. I have a question though. But who got the cat out of the tree? You know, I didn't hear that part of the story. <laughs> My research, I didn't come across that part of the story. Oh, I also forgot to say one thing that the fireman said to Lori. The fireman actually said to Lori, you know, lady, I've never seen any cat bones in a tree. They're going to come down eventually. Basically saying your cat's not going to die up there. You'll be fine. Oh <laughs> my. What, first of all, if you don't, if you don't go into trees 
to get the cat out of it. How do you know you've never seen any cat bones in a tree? Exactly, exactly. Now, another interesting fact, the cat's name was actually Molly Boo. Which is Molly a, Boo. Right, isn't that such a precious name yes. for a cat? But this story blew up. She went viral for back in the day. She blew up. Like, this was international headlines. It, at first, the mayor was not happy about this, okay? He was like, oh, Jesus. Who <laughs> lived across the street. Right, it's a PR issue. They didn't want anything to do with it. But, you know, Lori blew up, and she's going to, like, take advantage of it. And you know what? She did. After this, she shut, She set up the first witch shop in Salem. Iconic. Now, some say this was actually... Now, different sources say different things, but some say this was actually the first witch shop in America, too. Oh. Now, if you think about it, too, this might be accurate because witchcraft actually didn't become legal in America until 1952. Yeah. Which I didn't know until my research. Like, I didn't know it was actually illegal until that point. I'm not sure what, like, what changed their minds to make it legal or whatever, but like, they're still coming off of it being legalized and everything. So like, I wouldn't be surprised if this was like the first witchy shop in America. Now, in the origins of this shop, it was very like homegrown. Like she would go to the woods and pick her own herbs. She would make her own candles, her own spell bags. I love that. She would even draw like the labels. Sigils. No, oh, she would draw the, the labels herself. Like, it was very homegrown, right? And now, also, one thing, another reason Lori opened this shop was for educational purposes. Because, like, now she has all these eyes on her. Mm -hmm. People are questioning her. Obviously, people are coming at her saying, like, oh, which got the devil. She's the devil and things. But mm -hmm. she wanted to educate people and let them know, like, this isn't something to be scared of. She's just, like, living her life. It's a very cool religion it's not harmful it's nice they mean no harm we'll get more into that in the future but she really and this is a common thing for Lori all throughout her life it's she just wants to take the negative stereotypes out of witchcraft and educate people i love that now as like rumors started to spread and things and like People were saying things like she danced with the devil and drank baby's blood and all the witchy stereotypes. I saw Goody Cabot dancing naked in the woods with the devil. Right, exactly, exactly. Lori really, she ignored all this and really leaned into the witchy stuff with her marketing. And it really worked with her. She was a marketing genius. Oh, you know, that. Lori actually started dressing up in ritual garb full time. So like for ritual garb, Guard for Wiccans are like mm -hmm. black cloaks. Like she was walking around full time in black cloaks and just mm -hmm. like swishy gown, not gowns, but like dresses. Yeah. 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 Black. So she looked like a witch full time. So if you saw her, you knew she was a witch. And she actually, she made a vow to the god and goddess to do this. Mm -hmm. Now, for those at home, the god and goddess of witchcraft, they don't worship one god. It's a polytheistic religion. So they worship more to multiple gods mm -hmm. so the goddess is symbolized by the moon and the god is a horned god or the sun okay so she made a vow to their main god and goddess that she would wear the ritual guard for the rest of her life and she's 93 and she's kept that promise she's kept Shit. that vow there is not she'll be walking down the grocery store and you'll see her in this black cloak just walking around the grocery Wait. store did you say she's 93 She's 90-something. Maybe that math was wrong. That math is wrong. Wait. Because my, my grandfather was born in 1941, and he's only 80-something. Wait. Maybe Wikipedia. 20, 24 minus 1949. She's 75. Hold on. Let me Google this. Because I did get her uh, birth date off Wikipedia. So let me Google this real quick. Sorry, y'all. I'm an illiterate fuck. Leave me alone. 1933! I'm an illiterate fuck! Oh. I'm so sorry, everyone! Don't stone me! But wait, that adds a whole... You saying, like, this was a time when people didn't get divorced? Right. Yeah. 1933, she was born, so she would be, like, 94 now, then. What's the yep. math on that? Hang on. Um, 2024. We'll do 2023. When's her birthday? 
Um, it, her birthday is March 6, 1933. Okay, so 2024 minus 1933. 91. 91. And she's been wearing, like, Jeez. this scarf for forever, okay? I'm so sorry for the folks at home that I fuck. I blame Wikipedia. I got that birth year off Wikipedia, so this is not my fault. I blame Wikipedia. That devastates me because... Fuck those whores. Yeah, I love reading Wikipedia articles. I have beef with Wikipedia now. The owner of me and Wikipedia are going to fight. It's on site. They made me look like an idiot. And you know what? I'm adding them on Twitter. I'm adding them on TikTok, YouTube, Xtube. I have been telling you since we started this podcast, stop doing your research on Wikipedia. I know. Oh, my God. Okay. Well, she's in her 90s, and she's wearing all that. She looks like a witch. Perfect marketing. I mean, she's walking, walking billboard, okay? Yeah. And, you know, so she also taught work witchcraft workshops at the local colleges Mm -hmm. like really integrating with the community and also she did daily astrological readings for the local radio station so she did daily live astrological readings like the daily horoscope exactly the daily horoscope and that was probably like the first time that ever happened in the country now i think the most interesting story is so the red Sox, the baseball team yeah they had about a bad luck Right. So they brought in Lori Cabot and made it like a whole marketing thing. No fucking way. Yeah, they brought in Lori Cabot and had her cast a spell for luck. And? It worked. Jesus H. Christ. Christ on a Christmas tree. Christ on a cracker. Right. Like, Lori is a marketing genius. She got the whole Red Sox involved, right? And so the witchy stuff caught on and it really sparked a fire in Salem mm-hmm. like after all this stuff like other witches is she shots, the one who turned like Salem into the witch capital of America yes okay she was the first witch shop she got all this public notoriety even the Red Sox are involved people obviously they want a slice of the pie people are going to start mm-hmm. going to her shops so other witch stops start sorry witch shops start to open and then they start capitalizing one, the, where the witch capital, the trials happened here. Mm-hmm. And they really started, Salem started embracing their history, right? Embracing the witchiness of everything. Yeah. And really, like, Lori started this. Yeah. Now, keep in mind, this was before, like, she was even considered officially the official witch of Salem. Mm-hmm. Because that was an official title, which we'll get into very, very soon. Now, like I said... Lori was all about education, right? So she was, her very first class was called The Science of Witchcraft 101, The Science of Mind and Psychic Ability, nice. where she would train people to bring forth their own psychic abilities, let everyone know that everyone has psychic abilities and has access to their own powers and can do, can do all of these things, right? Now, I know we've gotten pretty deep into it, this without defining the word Witch. So, Lori Cabot's definition of the word witch is the good people, wise one, the healers. Okay. All good things. Good things. Now, Lori wants people to stop using the term witch as an umbrella term. She wants people to stop using, like, the term witch to describe people of other religions, Mm -hmm. like, as witches. Like, People who might practice voodoo or like okay. African forms of magic because the term witch is for Indo European magics. Yes. Not like voodoo and African mm-hmm. magics. So she wants people to stop using the term witch as an umbrella term for people of other religions who practice magic in their own way, right? That's something she teaches in her class. She wants to stop the misconceptions. She wants to people to clearly define the term what a witch is, who they are, what they do, what religion they are, right? And one pivotal point in her career was her uh, National Geographic photo. National Geographic came to Salem, Mm -hmm. and they were documenting witches in Salem, Mm -hmm. everything that was blowing up. And there's one particular photo shoot. They came to photograph Lori Cabot's coven, and okay. during this time, they were fo- like photographing them doing a ceremony where they were calling in Jupiter's blue light mm-hmm. um, to help them aid in the fight against 
this propaganda mm -hmm. and just to help to prevent like the misconceptions of witches and to help see witches in a clear light. And this is, don't worry, don't look up that picture because I'm about to show it to you. Oh, okay. Just to help see witches in a clear light and see who they really are. And they called in the blue powers of Jupiter or the blue energy of Jupiter to help them do this. And as these photographers were taking pictures, they captured this blue light. And DJ, let me show you this picture no now. No fucking way. No, before I show you this, keep in mind, this is National Geographic, a scientific publication. Yes. And this photo was reviewed by scientists. And every scientist who reviewed it, and there were photography specialists, like photographers and mm -hmm. like people who did this for a living who reviewed this photo and the film and said this wasn't tampered with whatever was photographed there it was in the room it wasn't on film it was in the room and i'm gonna show you this photo now <gasps> you can clearly see the blue light coming out of the chalice and flowing into each of the witches at that coven now, again, this is a National Geographic I wanna, photo. I'm about to piss my pants over that. Isn't that insane? Like, they said, and now, after this photo, Lori Cabot hadn't seen any of the photos, and they kept sending, sending representatives into her shop and kept asking her, what was going on in that room? What were you guys mm -hmm. doing? And she just kept saying, oh, we were just calling in Jupiter, the blue light of Jupiter, and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And, like, it happened, like, several times where they would send representatives in, to be like, what you what, doing, girl? Right, what happened? And they weren't telling her why. So finally, eventually, like, they told her why. They actually caught it on film. And she was like, yes, finally, like, what I've been doing is... I am vindicated. Right, I have evidence and things. And, like, everything is out there, right? Now, you would think after, like, a public, na like, a publication, like, National Geographic, which is very well known, mm -hmm. she would get finally like notoriety from her local government or something because she kept asking and asking after this to be like can i be recognized in some form by the government or whatever right. and they just kept being like no we're not gonna recognize you blah 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 until in the mid 1970s governor michael s Duk dukakis of massachusetts dukakis du dukakis dukakis Period. Dukakis. He recognized the work that Lori and her coven was doing with special needs children. And he loved this so much, the work they were doing to help the community and the mm -hmm. special needs children, that he just bestowed upon Lori Cabot the state's Patriot Award, which awarded her becoming the official Witch of Salem. Snaps all around for that. After all of those years of fighting for it, fighting to be seen in the media as equal, as like fighting to not be seen as evil, she finally gets her award. And part of this award actually was she got to greet foreign visitors from country, like different countries, right? So she got to be an ambassador and all sorts of things. And she also found it during this she founded the Witches League for Public Awareness to defend the civil rights of I witches so they couldn't be discriminated, discriminated against, against for their religion, which I think is really cool. And she continued to use this to really educate people about witches and what they do and things. And one of the main things that she would teach people and things is actually the very first rule of the Lori Cabot tradition of teachings, right? The Lori Cabot tradition of witchcraft, their first rule. And I'm going to read you this first rule right now that they always abide by. We abide by the threefold law of return and in it harm none, do what ye will. And that's what they live by. And yes. it harm none, do what ye will. And Lori always says, at the end of every spell they do, they always say, and let this be for the good of all. At the I end of it. every magic goosebumps. they do. You know, it's all about that. And Lori went on to educate people the rest of her life. She wrote lots mm -hmm. of books. 
And really, she just wanted people to view this as a science and just be taken seriously and not as like an evil person mm-hmm. as so many make it out to be. So what are you thinking about, Lori? What are you thinking so far? I'm kind of stan. I love her. So what we're standing, icon. Lori, right? Yeah. Right, we're standing. But why don't we get into the controversy <gasps> a little bit? No! So why don't we get into the first controversy? Have you ever heard of a little movie called The Witches of Eastwick? Yes. I love that movie. Lori hated that movie. Okay, among I can see why. Right, exactly. It portrayed witches as like crazy and sex crazy and she hated that movie and just movies like that that was just done up right right now she (laughs) did you say donut dyke john updike that he wrote the novel that witches of eastwick was based on oh okay okay now this led to her creating a whole like group that protested media like this Mm -hmm. um and she actually got on oprah yeah yeah She was actually on Oprah, and she talked all about this, right? Mm -hmm. And this kind of rubbed people the wrong way, because they were like, girl, calm down, it's just a movie. But to her, it's not. That's like her religion. Like, that's what she's doing. So that's one of the first things that kind of rubbed the people wrong Mm -hmm. way. It's like, they were like, girl, it's just a movie. Now, another interesting thing that happened was, there was a mayor who made a joke about a witch, right? So she decided to run against this mayor. Oh, no. No, no, no. Yeah. Unfortunately, that was short-lived. Yeah, I can imagine. I just know there was a little bit of controversy. There's not much controversy about why she quit. But the official reason why she dropped out of the race is to work on her book. Which, maybe she was actually just trying to work on her book. But, I don't know. Okay. Next controversy. Lori foreclosed on her condo. Into her cover, she started a witch corporation with entrepreneur Janet Andrews. Now, I heard in another story that Lori was talking about how at, there was one point she owed a lot of money, like $200,000 to the IRS. And Jesus, she started paying it down, but mm-hmm. she didn't pay it down quick enough. Now, this is what Lori was saying mm-hmm. about this. And she didn't pay it down quick enough. And they came in and were like, we're going to foreclose on you. We're taking your shop and everything. Like, right. And she said she did some magics and things like something magic happened. And one day someone from the IRS, IRS, I'm using quotations like air quotes, mm-hmm. came in and was like, okay, we're going to dissolve you the rest of this money that you owe to the IRS. And then at the end of this month, we're going to close this shop and we're going to start another shop under a new corporation name. The IRS said that to her. That's what Lori said. But I'm thinking maybe it wasn't the IRS. Maybe it was this entrepreneur, Janet Andrews, who came to her and was like, hey girl, I got a little bit of a business dealing for you. Because if you know the IRS, they're going to get their money, sister. And you know what? That's what Lori did. She closed it and started this S corporation. Um, yeah, because here's the th- thing with like when you owe money to the IRS, mm-hmm. if you dissolve the entity that owes the IRS money but open up a new one, it's like it all goes away. Yeah. But the thing is, Miss Andrews, that entrepreneur, she dropped out of this thing. She dropped Lori, and Lori was pissed. She said, and I quote, you can stick the corporation up your ass. I'm Lori Cabot, and I'm worth one million. And that made headlines. And then Lori Cabot began to leave voodoo dolls outside her house. (gasps) And she even threatened to shoot her in the head with a gun. (gasps) Jesus. Right. And eventually... Andrews even got a restraining order against Lori, which, of course, Lori didn't follow, and she had to go to court for and everything. Now, of course, I didn't find anything else on, like, the court trial or anything after Mm -hmm. that. I think after court, Lori just kind of backed Backed off and was like, okay. But did she still have the shop? The shop? Yeah, there's still... Well, no. Lori's shop actually closed in 2012. You can see it online, and she does online, like, you can buy things online. She has an Etsy shop. 
Exactly. You can take her classes online still. She does readings online. Now, I don't think she's doing readings right now because when I was looking at her website, she said she wasn't taking readings right now. So I don't know if that's like a permanent thing or she's mm -hmm. just taking a break. But she kind of backed off of that. So there was another instance mm -hmm. where she cursed two police officers who came to her house to return her grandson to the custody of their father, like the grandson's father. Right. And Lori looked them in the eyes and said, I curse you both. You both are going to be cursed for the rest of your life. Okay, but what happened to the whole witches aren't evil, we don't do bad things, I just do light for the betterment of society? Exactly, exactly. And it also makes me wonder what sort of other internal struggles there were because, like, if that, that's just one story I found about, like, the police going to her house mm -hmm. and the custody battle. So I imagine there was some other messy things going on there, like, if the police are coming to return custody of this grandkid and things. Now, people say perhaps the biggest conspiracy is how she used the tragedy of Salem to market her witch witchy stuff. Because there is a whole brand of people who say, like, she used the tragedy of the witch trials to... Yeah, because the witch trials weren't really witches. They were just people. And she used the tragedy to market herself and market her brand in doing that. And Lori, she was a marketing genius. I mean, she was able to get the Red Sox involved. So maybe she did see this opportunity and saw the witch trials and be like, I'm going to use this shit. Because this is audio only, please know I am gooped and I am gagged. Right, right. Honestly, I before researching this, I loved Lori Cabot and mm -hmm. I still do have a love for her and I have a love for the craft and everything. Mm -hmm. Like I loved learning about her as a kid and everything. But those last controversies, I literally didn't even learn about them until my last part of researching this. It was like the last four minutes of a YouTube video I watched. And I was like, oh my God, how did I not know about this? But again, it comes back to like, you put out in the media want the people to see, but you mm -hmm. never know what's going on behind closed doors. So take what you will with those controversies. But I think there's a lot more to the story, a lot more dealings and a lot more things that were happening behind closed doors. So after hearing the good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful Smasher Pass. Lori Cabot? Yep. Smash! Oh, Smasher! Yes. I agree. I still She's like kind of Lori. iconic. Right, right. I mean, even despite the controversies, like, just what she puts out, like, I'm here for love and peace and, like, the mm -hmm. understanding of witchcraft. Exactly, exactly. And I would love to do a whole episode on Wicca and witchcraft and paganism yeah. at some point because I was a Wiccan back in the day. I studied the craft. I know a ton about the craft, probably too much about the craft. So I'd love to do an episode in the future about it. I just love the topic. And I still have a love for Lori. And you know what? Say what you will about using the tragedy for your own benefit. But isn't there something beautiful about taking something ugly making it beautiful yes i am all for that and i think that's part of what she did she took a tragedy and she really empowered people and she made the best of it what happened to the salem which is was awful and evil but at the end of the day Lori cabot i think was fighting a good fight and she what everybody has their problems and I'll stop being a Lori <laughs> Cabot apologist now and say we stand, we love, and yeah. So do you have I anything you'd that. like to add about Lori? No, I just love that. And honestly, it, I researched witchcraft and I did a little bit of candle magic back in the day. And we all know I read tarot. And I kind of got off of it. But this story really made me want to get back into it. I know. Life's... So much more beautiful with the little magic. Yes, it definitely is. And I feel like that's something the good witch would say. And I feel like that's a good note to end on. Yeah. Oh my God, Paul, what a fantastic story. Thank you for sharing. Anytime. As anytime. our first April story. And if you're interested in Lori Cabinet, um, 
If you're interested in Lori Cabot and her teachings or want to know more, she has her own website. Just go to LoriCabot.com or follow her on YouTube. She has her own YouTube channel. Go watch her videos. Definitely going to bookmark both of those. Yes, yes. But for now, let me go ahead and give you my socials. So, well, actually, screw me. Let's do the podcast socials first because this is Crips and Quirks, and Crips and Quirks is what matters. So, first... You can follow us on Facebook at Crips and Quirks. You can follow us on Twitter or X at Crips and Quirks. You can follow us on TikTok, TikTok and Instagram at Crips and Quirks Pod. If you have any stories, any story suggestions, just want to give us a shout out, you want to slide into the DMs, you can email us at cripsandquirks at gmail.com. And if you want to follow me personally, you can follow my personal Instagram at Paul Ember, P-A-U-L-E-M-B-E-R, and my personal TikTok at Paul Ember, P-A-U-L-E-M-B-E-R. And DJ, if they want to follow you, where can they follow you? You can follow me on Instagram or on TikTok at The Real Deej Powers. I think that's right. <laughs> um, and remember, it's not du- delivery, it's DuJourno. God, I could go for a pizza every time you say that. Me too. I think that line is just creative genius. I don't know how you came up with it, but genius. Stole it from another marketing person. (laughs) (laughs) Iconic, iconic. Well, spooky friends, that'll do it for us today. And remember, always have a little magic in your life and keep your crypts tight and your corks loose. Bye. Bye. (laughs) Ha 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 ha. Oh my gosh.